weeping. It's actually translated perfection. When you study in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 9, I'm not sure that I gave you some of these scriptures um, that night, but you do well to, to take some of this now. Just read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 9. For we are glad when we are weak and yet strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. The word is kadatesis. Even your perfection. Then you go to Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 11. You'd see another, another word that's used here. Actually, um, when you get into uh, verse 12, because they, they come from the same root word, katatizo. And katatizo um, has to do with amending, see, um, the preparation. It's like fixing something, framing, see. And this time, you'd see it in chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, we'll read from verse 11 into it. Book of Ephesians. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting. Perfecting the word is katatismos. See, perfecting. The word is to equip, to prepare, to make ready. See, so for the perfecting of the church, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So that's why we say that the first thing there is alignment. Because you, you're being brought into God's perfect thoughts, will, purpose. Without being aligned with how God thinks, with what God thinks, with God's will, you, you can't manifest them. You can work with them. You have to be brought in. And the way to bring you in is through this preparation, this training, equipping you with knowledge and information. Like sharing with you about perfection in the first place. If you're, not, if you're not taught, if you're not informed, if you don't get to know about it, how will you ever walk in perfection? See? So this is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So that first one there, I told you, was alignment. And I said, through catathesis. The next one is completeness, fullness. Completeness. And again, this is translated as perfection in several versions because that's actually what it is in the Greek. Pleruo. Pleruo is to be made full. See? A fullness. And I, I, I'll give you scripture for this. Uh, I'll give you two scriptures. First one is Colossians chapter 4 in verse number 12. Colossians chapter 4 in verse number 12. It says, Epaphras, Epaphras was someone, all right, a member of the church, a leader in, in Colossae. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you. Paul is telling them because Epaphras was with him. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect. That ye may stand perfect. And then he says, and complete in all the will of God. The word translated complete there is the one I want you to see. Because in some other versions, it's translated perfect. The word is pleural. That you be full. It means to be replete. Replete with all of the blessings that God has brought to your life. Your life is full. In fact, there's, there's a scripture that, um, uh, that gives us an idea of what it means here, what God wants. And um, that's James chapter 1. In verse, verse number 4, it says, But let patience have her perfect work, 
that he may be perfect. Do you see that word again? Perfect, perfect. That will come to that. But perfect and entire. Entire is what I want you to see. Holocleros. Holocleros means to be whole. It, it means a, a fullness, a completeness, wanting nothing, lacking nothing. That you've got everything. So, pleruo is that you're full, made full, replete. Nothing out, nothing lacking, short of nothing. And here's why this is so powerful and so important. The use of this term in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. I've got to show you this. In Ephesians chapter 3, in verse number 19... I'll rather read it for you um, from verse 17. It's a prayer. He prays for the church in Ephesus that he may, st- it says, that Christ may dwell, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And look at this in verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. The word fullness is peruo. Filled with the fullness, the completeness of God. That's amazing. How can a man be filled with the fullness of God? Meaning the totality of divinity fully resides in the quarters of your being. That's the most amazing thing in all the world. It's so big, we are yet to totally comprehend it. What would it mean if we were ever to come to the knowledge of this reality? How would we walk? How would we think? If language means anything, and this is what the scripture means, I wonder what our thinking would be. But the truth is, every evidence and teaching of the word of God shows that this is exactly what he's saying. Because that's what Jesus was like. Jesus was the fullness of God in dwelling a body. That's what he says. I can read it to you. I've just given you scripture. Look at it. In Colossians Chapter 2, verse 9, talking about Jesus Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It doesn't get better than that. But when the church comes to this climactic revelation, then we will walk, we will call it the days of heaven upon the earth. Hallelujah. All right.